Hello and welcome to Trek Priest. I'm your host, Keith F. Shelvin, recording live here at the AS21 Studios in Lord, Virginia, part of the Trekkers Delight Podcast Network, bringing you the Trek news for the week ending April 3rd, 2024. First up, Skydance opens 30-day exclusive negotiating window to purchase Paramount Global. Deadline reported this morning that a framework of a deal most likely exists between the production company and the media empire. Bloomberg followed that news with a report of a deal between majority stockholder Sherry Redstone and Skydance chief David Ellison later in the day, but still no deal has been announced. The news, though, caused a 50% bump in the stock price as the market closed. This week, Star Trek Discovery Season 5 premiered, so ahead of that release, several of the behind-the-scenes people were giving interviews to promote the, the latest episodes of the flagship Star Trek series of the current era. Well, that includes showrunner and Star Trek mastermind Alex Kurtzman, who in his latest interview, this time with Cinema Blend, expresses a desire to greenlight Star Trek Legacy, the spinoff of the popular Star Trek Picard series, which ended this time last year. This interview is one of several given this week. Egan Kurtzman has been the lord of all Star Trek since Discovery spots in 2017, and he teased that there are surprises soon to come out that no one has guessed. Turning over to the big screen, news this week that we may be not getting one, but two movies. Industry sources report that Steve Yockey, writer of The Flight Attendant, is the latest screenwriter brought on board to script the fourth movie of the Kelvin universe. But wait, there's more. Although there was the April Fool's joke that Paramount was moving on from Star Trek 4 to work on Star Trek 5, it looks like there is plans to move on a separate standalone Star Trek film. We have heard rumors of this in the past from Noah Hawley, from uh, uh, Tarantino, but now we get a franchise origin story directed by Toby Haynes, director of episodes of Andor and the USS Callister episode of Black Mirror, and written by Seth Graham Smith, author of Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, as well as Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Both movies are hoped to be ready in time for the 60th anniversary celebration in 2026. The last major motion picture release in Star Trek Universe Star Trek Beyond was the sole major release for Star Trek's 50th anniversary in 2016. Now, as for a motion picture for the small screen, Star Trek Section 31, starring Michelle Yeoh, has wrapped its filming in Toronto, with Yeoh sharing the final clapboard in a picture to her Instagram. In a Variety article on the future of Trek, a first look was shared with Yeoh and another seated character that was not identified. In the article, they did let loose one news tidbit. Actress Casey Roll will play a young Rachel Garrett, future captain of the Enterprise C, as seen in the Next Generation episode Yesterday's Enterprise, with it at that version being destroyed in 2344. With that information, we know now when this movie is set, the mystical lost era between the end of the TOS movies in 2295 and the premiere of TNG set in 2363. We'd like to thank Audible for its support of our podcast series. If you go to audible.com slash AS21, you get three free months of uh, audiobooks with a free audiobook each month. I've been an avid audiobook listener for years now. I will listen to audiobooks as I work. I'm going to be starting Band of Brothers any day now. But other great things such as Make It So by Patrick Stewart, read by the author, are available to download so you can put your reading in your ear. Next up in the news, a Hugo Award nomination. Star Trek Strange New Worlds received two nominations this week. The crossover episode Those Old Scientists and the musical episode Subspace Rhapsody were both nominated for Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form. They're up against Doctor Who's 60th anniversary specials, The Giggle and Wild Blue Yonder, Loki's finale, Glorious Purpose, and the groundbreaking Last of Us episode, Long, Long Time, which featured a side storyline starring Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett. While season one of Star Trek Prodigy was released to Netflix on Christmas Day 2023, the only hits of seasons two release was some next year, meaning sometime in 2024. 
Now, as we enter the four month, fourth month of the year, there's still no news on its release, but for Trek fans in Paris and its environs, they can watch it as of last week. While Netflix holds the distribution rights in the U.S., French public television network France Télévision hosts the crew of the protostar and Admiral Janeway in computer-generated animation. The entire season was dropped on their VOD network, France.tv, without any fair headfare or promotion. Showrunners Dan and Kevin Hageman report on X, formerly known as Twitter, a miscommunication with France Television caused its early release. There's still no announced release date for Netflix or other markets. Further in streaming world, Pluto TV creates a dedicated Deep Space Nine channel. The service, owned by Paramount Global, has hosted two channels, Star Trek and more Star Trek, for some time now. And this week, they added a third just for Deep Space Nine. While the two previous channels showed episodes from the multiple series, such as the original series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, this will be the first channel for Trek that is only for a single series. Now, for those in international news that caught the induction of Sweden into NATO this week, you might have noticed some familiar music. As the Scandinavian country was being inaugurated as the 32nd member of the military alliance, the orchestra played the opening theme from 1996's Star Trek First Contact, composed by Jerry Goldsmith. Perhaps they took the line, the Borg, sound Swedish, as an inspiration. And finally, we have breaking news this evening. From, from industry sources, Hulu has renewed the Orville for season four. No details available at the moment, but the news broken by the host of the Roddenberry Network's Mission Log podcast is definitely not an April Fool's joke. Be sure to like, share, comment as we launch this new series. For more on Star Trek news, Cats for Truckers Delight live show every Thursday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Right now, that's the best way to reach us, but social media will be coming soon. Thank you for watching. Once again, I'm Keith F. Sheldon, recording live here at AS21 Studios in Norton, Virginia. Live long and prosper.